Welcome to another Killer Whale Special Edition here on Tradewise. In this video, I'm speaking to one of the founders of an extremely important project. Although crypto safety and security is not one of the most sexy narratives in crypto, it's arguably one of the most important because literally millions of dollars of crypto is being stolen daily and it's very easy to fall into the traps and lose everything. Without wanting to be too alarmist, your crypto is at risk from fraud unless you have the right protection for your wallets. This is where WalletGuard can help. They not only got a very rare swim from all five of the Killer Whale judges on the TV show, they are also working with the likes of Metamask and Chainalysis to provide wallet protection that's badly needed in the space. Whilst there are some massive opportunities in the Web3 space, unfortunately, there also are a lot of ways that we can fall victim to fraud. Even though I've been in crypto for many years, I learned of a few new security risks during my conversation with WalletGuard and was even a little disturbed to find out how even applications I no longer used that I could have connected to months or even years ago can still drain my wallet. Luckily, WalletGuard can help with this. So if you're trading crypto, and especially if you're using wallets such as Metamask, then you really need to make sure you're protecting your assets. WalletGuard is completely free and could save you thousands in potential losses. You'll find an official link to their website below. Please make sure you take action after watching this video and also don't forget to hit that like button to show your support for what they're doing. So I caught up with Michael who pitched to the Killer Whale judges on the TV show. I have to say, although I've met many founders of Web3 projects before, Michael is one of the most passionate I've ever met. He's obsessed with Web3 security and him and his team are working tirelessly to make the crypto space safer for us all. Please take the time to listen to what he has to say and then take a few simple actions to protect your wallets. And now here's Michael to tell us more. Hi, Michael, and thank you so much for joining me here on the Tradewise channel. Uh, and congratulations as well. You were probably the most successful uh, actual pitch that I've seen on the show with uh, basically everyone, um, you know, giving it, uh, giving it a swim. How was it being on the show, first of all? Yeah, being on the show was quite an experience. Uh, going to Hollywood and getting your own trailer and then being transported from one spot to another. You got like people holding umbrellas around you, keeping it all secret. And then getting up to the point where they're revealing who the judges are. I didn't know who the judges were before I got into the stage, right? So it was quite a surprise, but the production quality was through the roof. It was really great the way they put it together. Yeah, it's a fantastic show. I've, I've loved watching it. Uh, anyone that's not watched the show, make sure you watch it as well. Like Basically, this video is for more of a deep dive into the project. But if you just want like a surface level introduction, then go and check out the Killer Whale show. And, um, you know, you'll be able to learn some uh, just, just the starting point, I think, for what Wallet Guard's all about. But really what I want to do is I want to deep dive uh, more into it uh, in this video. So just um, start from the beginning. Uh, what's, your, what's your background and what kind of brought you into the Web3 space? Yeah, I've been in cybersecurity and IT pretty much my whole life. I started my first LLC when I was 16 years old, opened up my first office when I was 20, did my first merger with a larger IT corporation at around 23 years old, became the CEO for an eight-year period, was able to scale that to over 10,000 residential customers and hundreds of business contracts, and then being able to transition from there into Web3 cybersecurity was a massive win. I actually ended up running into the co-founders of WalletGuard in a Twitter space about two, two and a half years ago. They were talking about security in Web3. And it was a constant thing that you would log on to Twitter and you would see people saying, I got my wallet drained. And like when I see something like that, it's like my own val like my own assets got drained. So even if it's a $10 NFT or a $10,000 NFT, it didn't matter. And coming from cybersecurity in Web 2, there's a lot of scams in Web 2, <laughs> just like there are scams in Web 3. So to be able to be behind a team and a tool that's actually help pe helping people secure the space, it was a no-brainer for me to jump on as a brand ambassador. They made me the brand ambassador for about a six-month period. And then they gave me a full-time position as partnership director. And we all ended up moving to one hacker house 
to continue building out this application. We've been there for about a little over a year at this point. We're going to keep on going. It really helps scale development 100x, you know, being being able to be in one place, putting in 20-hour days, 22-hour days. So it's literally been a dream because three years ago, I didn't understand what NFTs were. I hated NFTs. And it's like fear of the unknown. You just don't know what it is until you actually do a deep dive into it. So crazy to think that just a few years ago, hating NFTs and then now being like partnered with Chainalysis and MetaMask and being backed by industry leaders. And then we just passed a milestone of over 100,000 users protected. It's, oh. it's, it's literally a dream come true. And I think part of the reason why you did so well um, on, on the Killer World show Partly because I think it's quite easy for people to understand what it is that you do. And I, and I think some of the some of the projects that are kind of not doing so well on the show, they're not making it clear exactly what, what they do. I think you did that very well. But the other thing, as you say, this is badly needed in crypto. This is I mean, I've been you know, I've been in crypto for, for about seven years now. Luckily, not had any um major incidents so far. But there are times, quite honestly, when I go onto applications, maybe I'm uh, looking to get like an airdrop or maybe I'm looking to stake some tokens, something like that. Right. And there's not been any way for me to know that this, the site that I'm using is secure. I, I, quite honestly, there's, there's times where I'm just kind of like closing my eyes and just, just clicking the button and just hoping that nothing goes wrong because there's no real way of knowing, right, that that what you're doing is actually, you know, safe and secure. So I think what what you're delivering here is uh, is is super super needed uh, and definitely something that, that that I get behind as as well as the the killer whales as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one of the core things is how do we make Web three human readable? How do we make it so that people understand what they're about to interact with? And I think that the message is really clear. We're here to protect your crypto. If you self custody, you need wallet run. You need some layer between you and your preferred wallet. Because look, wallet guard is not a wallet. We're not an NFT. We're not a token. We're unlike other projects on the show. So to be able to bring this security layer to whatever your existing setup is, is a game changer. Yeah, definitely. So with that sort of being said then, do you want to just clarify what exactly is wallet guard? If it's not a wallet and so on, what, what exactly is it? Sure. So there's a couple of different parts to WalletGuard, and the overall goal of it is to help you stay safe when you're browsing Web3, especially when you're doing swaps, claims, mints, signatures, any sort of interactions. So we have a browser extension that's free and open source. And what it does is no matter what wallet you're using, it's going to be able to break down all those interactions into plain English. And we're also able to detect wallet drainers before the user even enters a website before they even connect their wallet, before they even run a simulation. That's a, like the security alpha because with zero touch, we're able to warn the user that this is not something they wanna interact with. Now, the other part to this is, is that a lot of scams, they get created and, and taken offline within a 24 hour period. And a lot of times they end up coming from a hacked discord or a compromised Twitter page. So, we are not a whitelist blacklist. We actually built a security engine from scratch that is able to detect these scams in the middle of the night when no one's paying attention. A scammer props up a fake airdrop or some sort of wallet drainer. We've already detected it. So this is why it's so important for us to work with communities and let them know that security and crypto exists, that we're not just coming and saying, hey, buy this, we're going to build it. No, we already built it. It's already here. It takes two seconds to get it and you're good to go. So I think really what it is, and this is why the show is so important, is exposure. We need people to realize that security in crypto exists and that it actually works. And I know on the show, we mentioned that we saved our users $5 million. We've already over 10X that. Over $50 million has been saved since we shot the show. So it's obviously working. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. And the thing is, is that it's so easy to do for people to fall into these traps. That That's the thing is, like say, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's late at night and you're just tired and you just see a link and you just click it, you know. But, but some of them are just so sophisticated. And, you know, whilst 
kind of having self-custody is a great thing you know the blockchain decentralized etc is fantastic i'm all for it i'm sure you are you are now as well but you've got no protection that that is the problem is you know if if you if you're susceptible to something like say a bank fraud you know your bank will have measures and they they can protect you that that third party in that instance is actually worthwhile you know because you can then get some kind of protection or credit card fraud etc with with web3 if if you connect to the wrong site you know and your your wallet gets drained that's it it's gone i mean it is gone there's no one's call there's no one that can help it, your your funds are gone and so that i, I just i, I want to just make sure that people realize just how you know serious this is and and i don't want to scare people off by the way you know like i said i mean I, i've been here for years i've, I've fortunately never had uh, any you know uh, any mishaps so far but it is easily done and particularly i think you know new people coming into the space just need to be aware that they do need this protection they need to be safe and secure and prior to actually uh, learning about wallet guard i didn't know really what what there was to it as i say really i've just been kind of hoping and, and i've just been very lucky i think that i've not been kind of susceptible because i do use a lot of different apps and things obviously i, I try and employ some common sense in there as well um but yeah well, i mean you know, you know i just want people to really understand you know how important it is i uh, just want to drill the point home and how wallet guard is so unique in in the fact that this is this is the well it's certainly the first thing i've ever seen that that can kind of have have this capability yeah i think i think one of the main points to understand though is its human nature people are not going to care until they lose everything the first time yeah outside of look i've been doing hundreds of twitter spaces I post content on my personal channels as well as the Walligar channels about easy wins, easy tips, things that take seconds to do so that you don't have to run into the scenario that we see on a daily basis with everybody else. Yeah. And still it goes over people's heads because the sentiment is it's not going to happen to me. Well, (laughs) that's that's obviously uh, starting to become a problem considering Everyone in crypto, it's like you talk to them and they're like, yeah, I got drained at one point. It's, that's not how we should be in crypto. It should be you should you should be proactive about your security so you don't get to the point where you're getting drained and sending us a DM saying I need help. But trust me, I'm going to use Wallet Guard moving forward. No, the goal is to use Wallet Guard so you don't get to the point of shooting us a DM asking for help. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so that, that reminds me. So I'll post links below this video. Anyone that wants the official links to go straight to your official website, I'll post it below. Even while we're chatting, people can just have, you know, we'll carry on the conversation in the background. Just go and use this application because it's super, super important. Don't forget, it's free. I mean, that, that that's the thing here is that you can't even, people can't even say that it's too expensive or whatever. There's no cost to it. So, you know, for me, there's no reason not to do this right now that I can see. Right. I mean, look, in order to get wallet drainer kit detection, human readable signatures, transactions in plain English, I mean, you don't even have to connect your wallet to us. You don't have to sign anything for those security layers. Yeah. This is something that that involves zero touch from your end. And like I said, it works with whatever your existing setup is. You don't have to move your assets around. You don't have to create a new wallet or anything. It, It just works. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So, so just to just to recap then on what the actual product um, can do, what the software can do. So, first of all, there's the there's the sort of safe browsing aspect to it. So you've got the browser extension, which I'm I'm using now. Uh, dead easy to do. Again, it's free. I'm using it on Chrome browser, and yeah. that's just running basically in the background. Uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, but that will just flag up if I jump on a on a you know a, a, a an illegal kind of site, something that's that's, that's just not as, as it should be. That will, will that ping me a notification? How, how will that actually work? Yeah, so let's say there's a Discord that's compromised. Let's say it's dropping drainer links. Let's say a Twitter page gets SIM swapped in the middle of the night. There's a scam advertisement on X or Google or whatever the case is. You get a DM about someone telling you there's a free mint and trying to get you to foam. All of these scenarios, Wallet Guard is double checking what you're about to interact with. And it's coming up if we detect the wallet drainer prior to you even entering the website. But let's pretend you decide to continue anyway, because that's what DGENs do. Once you connect your wallet, there's another layer of security that comes up that breaks everything down into plain English. And we actually built a AI model, uh, five custom plugins for ChatGPT that we've integrated directly into our transaction simulation that allows you to talk to our transactions in plain English. 
So you can literally, no matter what you're about to interact with, say, explain this transaction to me. And it's going to break down all those variables and teach you about what you're about to do. This is how we pair tooling with security, because it could be the middle of the night. You're not paying attention. The education is out the door. And this is where the tooling steps in. And in other cases, vice versa. So to be able to pair both of them, we think you need both in order to stay safe. So that's on the browser extension side. Yeah. And then, of course, we do have our security dashboard. Now, this is not an extension. This is a website. So it's also mobile friendly. And what it does is it lets you connect your wallet and see all of the help related to any open approvals, any of your assets at risk, even if your wallet extensions and your browser are out of date, or if there's any honeypots that you shouldn't be interacting with. The security dashboard is really a clean interface so you can improve your wallet health all in one place. You could revoke approvals. You could check on the status of any transactions. I mean, we've made it super easy to just stay safe. Uh, so if you're pairing the browser extension with the security dashboard, you're getting very close to that, as secure as you can get. Because at the end of the day, nothing is 100%. But look, if we're pairing that education with this tooling, we're getting the user as close to 100% as possible. Yeah, that's it. So so I've run the scanner on the, on my wallet. So so we've, we've talked about the, the actual browser. So when you're browsing, you know, that's just kind of peace of mind as you're browsing. The wallet scanner, though, yeah, is is a really useful tool because it it's kind of it's looking at your history as well. So it, it it will tell you if I connected to a site a year ago, and maybe I've completely forgotten about that site. You know, right. I connected to it a year ago, right? So you know, it's out of my mind. You guys can actually see that there's perhaps a connection still there, and and right. it's flagging it to say, you know, you need to be careful of this this old connection. So. I, I just thought that that kind of blew my mind a little bit that 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 this is able to do that because it's not just about what what you might do in the future it's also about what you what you've done in the past as well um, and then it gives you a rating score as well um, and it will flag it seems to be able to show pretty much anything that I'd kind of connected with and give it like um like, like say like a, a sort of rating score quite a few you know most of the things I connected to was safe but it did flag one in particular that was saying was unsafe and that I should disconnect from that uh, that particular application so I just clicked the button literally I just stayed within the wallet scanner clicked to disconnect it and then and then that was it I, I was I was safe from that application I, I just thought that was fantastic again never seen anything like that before but it was a brilliant user experience yeah I, I think really what we focused on is the UI and the UX to make it like grandma friendly right yeah. like we want it to be so that it's the most layman terminology possible. A lot of security tools, they overcomplicate things. They're giving you too much information or they're trying to break down all the code and it just gets yeah. unenjoyable to use. So if we're telling you, this is what you're sending, this is what you're receiving, are you sure you want to do this? Or if we're telling you, hey, two years ago, you approved this contract and this might put your assets at risk, you should revoke it immediately. That's how we can keep people safe because they're not going to be afraid to employ security. I think that's one of the biggest blockers is that people think it's like too much work or again, it's fear of the unknown. They just don't understand what it is. Now, the reason why you want to revoke approvals is let's say you have a collection that you once upon a time listed on OpenSea and you have multiple assets in that collection. You gave OpenSea or Blur, that's any marketplace, you gave that marketplace the approval to move assets, sell them, or whatever the case is, uh, uh, in that collection. So let's say you have 10 NFTs in one collection, and you're only planning on selling one on a marketplace. Once that one sells, you should revoke the approval for the entire collection because let's say I'm a malicious actor. I could take advantage of that open approval. I can actually list all of your NFTs in a private sale for zero Ethereum directly to my wallet address. This is how most wallet drainers work and how they're able to self-execute within seconds and all your stuff is gone. So why even put yourself at risk in that scenario? Close those approvals. Yeah, that's a great example as well, actually, because people might think that they trust the website, you know, OpenSea, obviously, you know, it is trustworthy, but by keeping these um, these sort of transactions open, then you know you you still le you're still vulnerable even on a trustworthy site. So I guess th this just illustrates the fact that even if you trust the website, there are still things that you need to be you need to be sort of conscious of. Right, the attacker is using and leveraging that approval in order to execute something that even on a legitimate website, 
is technically malicious. Okay, great. So um, the other thing that um, I noticed that was on the, uh, the the dashboard. So we talked about the the, the safe browsing. We talked about the wallet scanner. Um, you said that you're not sort of doing whitelisting and blacklisting of websites, but it, it did look like there's like an official link section as well. So that if people are unsure if they're going to say the right Uniswap, they could go and get. There is like a um, DApp store. So so what we did was we built out the DApp store, which is all the official links for pretty much anything anyone's looking for. Now this is very important for onboarding. If you're talking with your friends and family members about crypto and you're mentioning OpenSea, you're mentioning MetaMask, Phantom whatever the case is, they might go the next day and try to figure it out themselves. They're probably going to go to Google or Bing. They're going to type install MetaMask and they're going to hit a scam website and they're going to rub themselves before they even get into crypto. And then they're going to say the whole space is a scam. So instead, if they got WallaGuard first, they'd be able to go to the dashboard, click on the DAP store, take off the wallet tag and see all the official links, including MetaMask, Phantom, all of these different wallets in one place with the direct installations. I mean, that's an easy win for onboarding. And you know that they're going to be sticking within these guardrail environments so that they don't go off and click on a bad link because they, they're new to the space. They don't know that OpenSea is OpenSea.io. They might think it's .net.com. So you don't want that phone call the next day where they're saying, yo, I thought it was a free mint. What happened to all my NFTs? I thought it was OpenSea.com and not OpenSea.io. What happened to my wallet? So let's set up that understanding of, hey, this is where you should start off so that you could degen safely moving forward. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you, we've talked um, a little bit about the different types uh, uh, of what we talk about MetaMask, for example. What, what wallets uh, will this actually work with? Yeah, I mean, we work with pretty much uh, right now for the transaction simulations. Ethereum, uh, as far as blockchains are concerned, Ethereum, Polygon, Arbitrum, Optimism, and Base. For the phishing detection, that's blockchain agnostic. So we're actually able to detect wallet drainers on multiple different chains, even Solana. Um, you know, a lot of different risk factors are shown. For example, the website was created two hours ago. Imagine you're talking with somebody in the DMs and they're like, yo, we've been building for months check out our website, mint it right now. The quantity is running out. You click on that link and WalletGuard pops open and says, this website was created 36 minutes ago. You're going to be like, hold on a second. These people said they were building for months. You know, that multiple, uh, the, the fact that we can show the user multiple risk factors without getting in the way of them degening is, is like a, a big wake up call. You're going to be like, hey, hold on a second. Maybe I shouldn't be interacting with this because again, it could be, the middle of the night, you're not paying attention, you FOMO into something. If you're not using a tool like WalletGuard, you're pretty much SOL. And you talked on the show about um, partnering with MetaMask. Um, you, su yeah. you suggested that there would be like a, maybe even like a toggle to, to use it within the MetaMask app. Is that still going ahead? So when that show aired, uh, it, we were MetaMask snaps haven't even been released yet. And the terminology that I was meaning to say was the fact that we are one of their launch partners for the MetaMask Snaps platform. So you can actually enable WalletGuard directly in your MetaMask. So you don't have to install WalletGuard as a separate extension. So you can get human readable transactions inside of your MetaMask through WalletGuard instead of just seeing a gas fee. And that's a game changer because a lot of people, they don't want to install a separate extension, but if it's something that's you know, you could enable directly in MetaMask, that's a win-win for everybody. So having both the browser extension and the MetaMask snap, I mean, you have multiple layers of security right there. And we love working with MetaMask. We do quarterly security spaces with their main account. Uh, we're constantly pushing out content and the MetaMask snap has been very successful. We're one of the top transaction simulation snaps in their directory. I believe there was about 24 or 27 launch partners in the snaps directory for them and we were one of those partners as well okay and so I, i've obviously talked about the fact that i'm uh, using this software you've obviously said that you highly recommend people to download this and to be secure um but why should why should people trust you i know it's a difficult question to ask but um why should they actually trust that this software is actually going to offer them the protection that uh, that, that it says it does 
Yeah, definitely. That is a very good question. So when it comes down to it, we build in public. Our repos are available on GitHub, whether it's the browser extension or the MetaMask snap. We have a direct developer pipeline from GitHub to the Chrome store. So our users know the exact code that they're installing at the time they choose to use WalletGuard. And really what it comes down to is transparency. We're all doxxed. We love to literally show you how we've been building out this product and keeping it as transparent as possible, considering trust is one of the hardest things to build in crypto and trust of the security company is even harder. So I think our track record over the past two years goes and really affirms the fact that we we are trusted. You know, we are people that uh, really put it, put it all out on the table for people to see exactly how we've been building and exactly the code that's involved when you're choosing to use WalletGuard. And for those that can't read code, are there, are there any sort of people, uh, individuals or companies that have actually kind of officially audited or looked at the code? Yeah, for the MetaMask Snap specifically, we actually had consensus diligence uh, perform an audit on there. Uh, it is required in order to even be in the Snap's directory. And with the browser extension, there's multiple security professionals that are actively contributing to the code and, and letting us know if there are any exploits. So this is something that we have to be able to keep up to date with considering any day anything could happen, right? We cannot be sleeping on this. So uh, I think one of the most important things is to stay vigilant, stay awake. Nothing is 100% secure, but if we're able to implement all these procedures and we're able to show people, hey, this is exactly what you're gonna be interfacing with, then we could get it as close to 100% as possible. Still, you got to keep your eyes peeled. If someone tells you that this tool is going to, is your end all security tool, I wouldn't trust it. And um, obviously, uh, I've mentioned that the, the application is free to use. Um, what's your actual business model? What's your revenue model? How are you actually uh, making money for yourselves? Yeah, so uh, we have been backed by multiple industry leaders. And that helped us create this runway for about a year and a half that we've been developing nonstop. And because of this, we are now have proof of product. We've gotten to the point where we have over 100,000 users and we know that the product works. So what we're going to be doing over the next few months is we're going to be kicking on monetization. Now, WalletGuard will always remain free and open source for the sake of onboarding, but we're going to have multiple layers to it. So let's say you're a heavy user. Uh, you're constantly want to check transactions. You're browsing hundreds of sites a day. That's going to help us leverage the cost of keeping it free for the masses. And we're bringing that to WalletGuard Pro. And WalletGuard Pro is going to be super cost effective, anywhere from 5 to $8 a month. And that's going to be our first plan that we're going to be releasing. Now, we're also going to be partnering up with an antivirus company, as well as a crypto insurance company. So there's going to be multiple tiers of uh, whether you have zero dollars you want to spend on your security or you have twenty dollars a month five dollars a month whatever the case is and you have tens of thousands of dollars of assets that you're trying to protect so let's pretend you come to wallet guard not only are you getting web3 security through wallet guard you're getting web2 security with an antivirus and a crypto insurance policy on your assets as a fail safe all from one place i mean I mean, I don't see anybody else doing that and pulling it off in that manner. So I think it's going to be game changing once it launches. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you you guys just um, I'm sure there will be other people that, that come along and other companies that, that try and replicate this. But but this for me is just, um, you know, you, you, you've definitely um, put your put your flag in the sand and establish yourselves. And it sounds like you're, you, you know, you've got some really exciting stuff as well. What else can we expect maybe from the roadmap? What what's um, what what you plan to roll out over the coming uh, months then? Uh, other than uh, obviously the, the the sort of Freeman model that we talked about. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that I can't necessarily talk about, but I okay. will mention a couple of features that we're dropping over the next few weeks. We're going to be launching soft locking. It actually allows you to lock your assets in your wallet with no gas, and any time that you interact with the contract and it attempts to move or touch that asset, there's an additional layer of security where WalletGuard is stopping that transaction from occurring. So not only are you getting that through the transaction simulation, but you've soft blocked your asset so that in case something does try to take it from you, it's a double confirmation of, hey, if you are you sure you want to do this? If you do, make sure you go back to the dashboard and unlock this asset. So we're doing that gasless, which is, again, wow. it doesn't cost the user anything. 
and your settings actually carry with you from device to device. So if you're using WalletGuard with a wallet on your desktop and you lock assets, and then you go to your laptop where you have WalletGuard and you have that same wallet, those assets are automatically locked as well. Wow, that's wow. huge. <laughs> it sounds a bit like a 2FA then, basically, for your, for your crypto assets. Yeah, yeah, it's like multi-factor, uh, just, you know, just letting you know that, hey, this is something you have to do in order to continue to the next step. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, any plans for token at all? No token. <laughs> I had that's to like one of the you know, like main things. To... <laughs> the amount of times that we've seen people come in the Discord, shoot us a DM, or like just ask us like, when token, when token? Yeah. The answer is, as of right now, never token. Um, we we just don't think that it makes sense to do it based on our business model. Uh, there's been hundreds of fake wallet guard tokens. I've okay. seen, yeah, please be careful, guys. Uh, th there's a lot of scammers out there that literally copy paste everything that we're doing, spin up a fake website, make it look as legit as possible. And it's just not us. Unless you're getting it from the source, it's not real. So those tokens all eventually end up going straight to zero because they're just not real. These are scammers that are liquidating you. So please be careful out there. Yeah. Again, I'll post the uh, the, the link uh, below to the official website. But do you want to just actually tell everyone what the official website address yeah. is? Yeah. Everything I've spoken about is all on one place, WalletGuard.app. So you'll be able to get the browser extension. You'll have access to the security dashboard. You could enable the MetaMask Snap. And on the website, we also have the WalletGuard Academy, another free resource with all the articles on how to create your first wallet, how to set up your computer the right way so that you web two before you web three. How can we expect the masses to come into crypto when they don't even know how to manage their own passwords or the concept of having an antivirus? We break it down in the WalletGuard Academy. So that, again, you can stay safe as you're browsing, especially when it comes down to like, you're you're bringing your hard-earned money into the space. And there's there's a lot of people that are after that money, even if it's $100. The forces are working against you and scammers multiply by the second. Banks have multiple layers of security. We're teaching you how to have that same layers of security in the wallet guard account. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So... Everyone, you know, don't wait for something to go wrong. That's the message. Don't please don't wait for something to go wrong. Secure your assets, secure your wallets now. Use the link below. Go and get it. It's free. <laughs> please just go and, you know, just take that security step and then you'll have peace of mind. And um, you know, you can go and be degen and still, you know, take risks and things, but at least the risks are, are known risks <laughs> rather yeah. than uh, people uh, trying to scam you out of your, your coins. And 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 I'll, and I'll also put it this way: If you do your own research on WalletGuard, I guarantee you, you'll be very satisfied. We are open source. The entire team comes from Fortune 500 companies. We're backed by industry leaders. We're partnered with MetaMask, Chainalysis, multiple different companies. We're, we've been on Killer Whales. We've been on the Binance Incubator. We've been in their first show in the metaverse, which was all digital, but Killer Whales was obviously physical. So. Uh, you know, we've been in the space for multiple years. We're DGENs ourselves. We're not just a bunch of VCs and investors. We're building this product to use ourselves. This is something that we use every single day. So type wallet guard into Twitter. See what people are saying. Even though we're not monetized yet, every single day there's people shouting us out. They're telling us, hey, I onboarded my friend and you helped him stop getting scammed. Or I went to this website and you guys blocked it. Thank you so much. That's worth millions of dollars to us. That's why we do this. It's not about the money. It's about changing the landscape for security and crypto. We are the missing layer so that people can stay safe. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on and explaining more, Michael. Really, really appreciate it. Congratulations once again on your success on the show. And uh, yeah, I just I just hope you go from strength to strength. You know, you've already just in the last few months, obviously seen massive growth. I just hope that continues for you. Perhaps we'll pick up again uh, in the year's time and see where you're at Um but again, thanks thanks for joining us today. For sure. And just so people know, because uh, this is a common thing, I posted a picture and like I got my hair in a bun right now. I know Anthony on the show, he was like, you got to cut your hair. You got to do this. I'm not cutting my hair, Anthony. The longer I don't cut my hair, 
the more millions we keep on saving people. So make sure you don't raw dog the blockchain, use wallet guard, let's go. I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into the slightly scary world of Web3 security. Now that I'm using WalletGuard, it's comforting to know that my crypto assets are more protected than ever before. Although even with WalletGuard, it's still important to stay vigilant and always be on the lookout for potential scams. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe as there's a very good chance you'll enjoy future content from me as well. Also, don't forget to hit that like button on your way out. Thanks a lot for watching this WalletGuard review and I look forward to seeing you again in my next video. Bye for now.